What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. If you don't know who I am, that means you're new. I'm Mark. What's good with y'all? Go check out my other videos. Check them out. Check them out. But first, stay on this one. You know, I think this is a pretty important question, I guess. You know, a lot of people, especially with one of the, you know, with my most recent video or one of them, I guess. Uh, you know, the topic of triggers has been on my mind and I thought I, you know, should clear a couple of things up. So you read the title, you saw the thumbnail, let's get into it. <clears throat> is a heavy trigger on a handgun, does that, or at least does having a heavy trigger on a handgun make it bad for self-defense? I'm going to go into and give my reasonings for why or why not it may be, what situations it may or may not be helpful in, the pros and cons of it, all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. So <clears throat> for starters, we have to discuss what would qualify as a heavy trigger in today's day and age, especially with guns like, you know, for example, the MP Shield Plus out right now. Guns like that, that it's really, it's hard to find guns with super heavy triggers that you would use for your everyday defensive situations that are beyond something like, you know, the Beretta M9 when it's in this double action mode, uh, double action revolvers, things along those lines, really any double action guns as a whole, the trigger is fairly heavy on. But we're going to get into that as well a little bit afterwards. So for starters, we're going to start with a trigger that people would often actually, actually people have often complimented, and that is the PSA daggers trigger. You can see right here, of course, it is clear. Let me move it to where you can see red through it. <laughs> I was about to say. All right. So for starters, you know, a little spongy, not too bad though. Very light. Well, not very light, but a lot lighter than your standard Glock trigger. Pretty easy, right? You know? Another thing that makes a trigger very good is the reset on it. So we will be going over that as well. You know, pretty standard reset, nothing too, too special. Uh, however, it's not a bad reset either, which is kind of what makes it good itself is that it's not a super shitty and you basically don't have to sit here and, you know, double check always. You don't have to sit here and basically completely let go of the trigger to get a reset like you would with something like a revolver or a couple of other guns. But regardless, you know, so some that's often known as being a fairly nice trigger, right? We move on to something that is the pretty much now standard of triggers. And, you know, even though I know it's all clear because I cleared all these guns before I started recording, I still will show you guys. You can see, well, right. you can see it is clear. A Glock trigger, nothing special about them. People love to hate on them, but nothing special about them, you know? Pretty standard, about five or six pounds. That's really your average that you're looking at, you know? Hold on, let me redo, you know, let me re-show y'all the reset, all right? See, nothing super special with the reset either. You know, honestly, I would consider those very close to the same when it comes to the distance of the reset itself. Another gun that people say often, actually, no, 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 we're, we're going to move into, you know, actually, my apologies, we're going to start moving into a bit more of what people would say are bad triggers or terrible triggers, and I'll explain why. <clears throat> Towards G2C, before you make fun of the fact that it's purple, this is my wife's. So <laughs> let's clarify that. I have mine on my hip, I just didn't want to clear the chamber on it, so I grabbed hers. <clears throat> so, you know, a pretty... Standard trigger. I mean, it take, has a lot of take up though. It's not super heavy, but once you get to that wall, it's there. You know, the reset. See, sometimes you have trouble even getting to the reset. Ah, you know what? Hold up. Let me double check. There we are. My dumbass. There we are. See, nothing super special about the reset. It's not a very good one either, you know, but it's also not very bad. That's where, you know, it kind of makes it okay is the fact that it's not a super shitty reset on it. We're going to move to a gun that I personally believe has a, you know, pretty, pretty heavy and not so great trigger. The Smith & Wesson SD9VE. It doesn't have a bad trigger. It just doesn't have a good one by any standard. The trigger is pretty fucking heavy, you know, considering what it is. It is, you can see... That's where the giveaway stops, and then you're all the way from there. Now, what's the reset? There we are. That's the reset. 
It is not a good trigger, really. It is a decently heavy trigger. Uh, if I'd have to guess, because I would love to get one of those uh, one of those devices that measures the weight of the pull of the trigger. Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably anywhere from around seven and a half to eight pounds, maybe eight and a half. It is not a light trigger by any standard. Uh, does that mean, for example, that this is a bad gun for self-defense? No, not at all. It still will work just fine for self-defense as long as you know how to shoot it properly. As long as you know how to shoot a heavier than your standard trigger, which would be, in this case, the Glock trigger, you know, five and a half, six pounds, six and a half maybe. You know, that's a pretty standard weight of a trigger pull right there, especially considering that Glock has just become the standard of firearms as a whole. So, <clears throat> long story short is that we, you know, you can see here, there's a, there's a varying difference. There is a varying difference when it comes to, you know, heavy triggers, whether it can be helpful or not, what the reset is. There's, there's multiple factors to it than just how heavy the trigger is itself. Now, as I said, the Smith Wesson SD9 VE, while having a heavier trigger, still a very good gun for self-defense. Why do I say that? Because, well, you got to look at a couple of, you know, pros to having a heavier trigger. Uh, if something gets caught up as far as like maybe fabric, you know, in the trigger guard, which would suck ass when you're like reholstering, you know, you do have a higher chance of at least not having an ND, which is always a good thing. Obviously, no one wants to have a negligent discharge uh, when it's something like maybe, a, you know, a Beretta M9 or, you know, something that can be put in, uh, excuse me, a firearm that can be put into double action, you know, and yeah. You kind of would rather want something like that, that it just would, I don't know. Look, the best way to phrase it is that I'm very cautious when it comes to, you know, holstering and reholstering my firearms and a heavier trigger can be very useful in case something happens to where you're worried about, oh yeah, maybe this might get caught in there. If you're worried about that, that it can just help you avoid a negligent discharge, which is a very, very big plus, you know, from a safety, uh, excuse safety. <laughs> oh God, I can English. Guys, it's about 3.30 a.m. right now as I'm recording. So <laughs> please forgive me if I, you know, fuck up my words a little bit. But it is a very big plus from a safety aspect, you know. Uh, now, a con that is also from a safety aspect is the safety to other people. Uh, if you do not train and practice with your... With your defensive guns, if they have a heavier trigger, you do run a chance of doing what a majority of people do when they first start shooting, which is, look, I'll even do one hand, that, that low and left right there. See how it just went low and left? Left just a little bit. If you don't have a good grip, you're going to go low and left, or at least a majority of people do. My whole point is simply that a heavier trigger, it can cause you to miss if you do not practice enough with it does that mean that the gun itself is not good for self-defense no that just means that you should practice with it considering you own the firearm that has the heavier trigger so i mean there there are pros and cons to heavier triggers uh does the trigger being heavier or heavy even make it bad for self-defense as a whole no not by any standard and i'm going to go into another reason as to why what did a majority of people in the 20th century, or at least the late 20th century, i.e. the 1980s, 90s, what did they mainly carry that had heavier triggers? Double action revolvers. I've, look, I've shot some revolvers that have some pretty smooth double action triggers, like for example, the Colt Python. Uh, you know, a very smooth double action trigger. Still, I mean, it's a double action trigger. You guys got to remember that. But it is a very lightweight one for being a double action trigger. There are some revolvers that have some really fucking heavy double action triggers. However, that doesn't mean that they're bad for self-defense. That just means that the triggers are heavier and you need to practice and be prepared for that. There's no other way around it. The Beretta M9, when it's on double action, it has a very heavy trigger. I Honestly, if I'm not mistaken, the trigger is like around 10 pounds for a pull when it comes. I could be mistaken, but... I'm pretty sure it's damn close to 10 pounds when it comes to, you know, it in double action mode. So I guess how you would classify, you know, a heavier trigger pull is based off what you have been shooting a majority of your life or what you are used to shooting. 
However, I think it's safe to say that a Glock trigger, you know, is a good medium ground. You know, it's probably the standard at this point for a trigger weight, which is around five, five and a half, six, six and a half pounds. Uh, really, I believe anything higher than seven and a half pounds is a heavy trigger, maybe even seven uh, is a heavier trigger. That's just the truth of the matter here. However, does that mean if a gun has it, it's bad for self-defense? No, not by any standard. And I'm aware this video was a, you know, a bit all over the place. However, it there's several variables that require it to be all over the place. You know what I mean? It's not just about the weight of the trigger pull itself that makes the trigger good or not. It's also the reset on there, as I showed you guys before. Some guns just have better resets than others when it comes to their triggers. The Smith & Wesson SD9VE might not be the best, but you know what? It will still do the job. It is still a very reliable gun. Same for other, same for other guns that have heavier triggers. Do you think that just because of the... the <laughs> Do you, all right, I'm not I'm not gonna you know compare the Smith & Wesson SD9VE and like a Beretta M9 because that's not a fair comparison. The Beretta wins any day of the year, <clears throat> but my point is simply just: Do you think that just because you know it's a heavier trigger that it's something that isn't gonna be useful for self defense? If you believe that, I want to know your reasoning as to why. You know, it, it doesn't make sense that okay, well, but I don't know. There's a lot of things when it comes to guns that. If they're, I mean, even just problems, not just, you know, pros, but just cons, right? There are a lot of cons, you know, that come with some firearms that you can work through without having to do too much. You know what I mean? Like, for example, something like this, train. It's been a while since I've shot this thing. I need to take it out. Uh, but train. You always want to train especially if you have a heavier trigger on your firearm. A lot of people love to sit here and say, oh man, th these triggers are garbage. You're not going to be able to hit shit. And <laughs> all that tells me is that if they didn't sit there and spend thousands of dollars on guns that have a super gucci out trigger, they probably sat there and fucked with the reliability of their own firearms, putting an aftermarket trigger in because they couldn't just sit there and train enough to get used to that trigger. That's all it tells me. That When somebody says that, that's all it tells me. All right. There are triggers that are absolutely atrocious. I'm in, there's no, you know, there's no doubt about it. But as long as it goes bang, when you pull the trigger, it can still be, it, it, you know what I mean? It, it can still be useful, I guess. You know what I mean? Is a heavier trigger good or bad? I guess that's all up to you and what you're looking for. There are pros and cons to it. As I said, you know, for some people, especially if you're like appendix carrying, you know, it, it might put you, you know, in a more mindset of ease, I guess you would say, knowing that, hey, I can, you know, decock this gun right here, put it in double action or whatever. It's then I'll, I can just slide it in there. It's less likely to have a negligent discharge. That's, you know, I get it. I get it. <clears throat> the heavier trigger itself kind of in a way acts as a safety. So there, there is pros and cons to a heavier trigger, but does it make it good or, or does the heavier trigger make the gun itself good or bad? I guess that's really up to you and what you're looking for in a firearm. If it matches your needs, you know what I mean? But that's really about it. There's no other way to you know sit there and kind of go about it. It really is based off what you're looking for in a firearm. If you're looking for a firearm with a lighter trigger, then get one with a lighter trigger. Uh, if you really don't care about the trigger weight and you hear somebody say, oh, yeah, the trigger on this gun you have is so bad, you're not going to be able to hit shit. Prove them wrong. Train with it and then just beat them when you when, call them out to the range. You know, say, hey, all the way out there, 25 yards. Let's see if you can hit pistols only. Come on. See what you got. People, people aren't going to expect it. You beat them. What do you know? Long story short, training is key. The trigger does not make the gun. It is the shooter that makes the gun. However, there also needs to be certain qualities to the gun that make the gun worthy of the shooter wanting the gun. So just let me clarify that. But with that being said, y'all make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that bell. When you hit that bell, hit all. And if you agree with me, 
Because a gun has a heavier trigger does not mean it is bad for self-defense. Just train with it, please. If you agree with me, make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.